Hello everyone! This is actually part 4 of my Hana for the Game for Beginners series. If it's your first time here and you want to learn about the basics of Hanafuda, I recommend you watch my video on Backup Pana first. Also, before I begin the video, I want to do a small follow-up from my last video about Mushi, where I mentioned that Nintendo manufactured all kinds of regional Hanafuda and other types of Japanese playing cards. But unfortunately, they stopped doing it around the 90s, and to this day, they only manufacture Hanafuda and Kabufuda. However, if you really want to buy Mushibana deck and you're in Japan, then you're in luck because Okuno Karta Shop in Jimbocho, Chiyoda City, Tokyo has a stock of these decks. As of the time when I made this video, of course, maybe you're watching from the future and they're not selling them anymore. And with that out of the way, roll the intro. Up until now, collecting Dekiyaku are optional. The only incentive for collecting them are those extra points. But what if we had a game where the Dekiyaku is the main focus? What if we made the Dekiyaku so special, so desirable, and so powerful, it stops the game and prevents the other players from getting a score? The result is a game called Rokutan. Hello again everybody! I'm so excited to share with you another Hanafuda game that isn't taught by other YouTubers. Yay! Well now bear with me as this video is gonna be short, as the game we will be discussing is mostly the same as a two-player Bakapana game. So without further ado, let's learn how to play Rokutan. Rokutan literally means six tanzaku or six ribbons. And the game got its name because of the only Yaku in the game. Which is, of course, six ribbons. Does it sound familiar? Well, yeah, it's the same Yaku as in Hanaawase. So, yeah, why bother having 16 Yaku that are difficult to memorize? Let's just have one. Make it so that the player who forms the Yaku stops the game, gets points from the Yaku, and the other player gets nothing. They lose. Good day, sir. Rokutan is a two-player game. If there are more than two players, they will have to wait until they could change places with the loser of the last game. The objective of the game, if you haven't figured out already, is to collect six ribbons. For the purposes of this Yaku, ribbons refer to all cards in Hanafuda that have the ribbon rank, but also all Willow cards are counted as ribbons. So in total, there are 13 ribbon cards in the deck. You may play as many rounds as you like. The game starts by choosing the dealer, who will also take the first turn during the game. This can be done by a roll of a die or by the traditional card drawing method. Choose whichever method you want. Next, the dealer takes all the cards and shuffles the deck. The dealer then deals 8 cards to each player's hand and 8 cards on the field face up and the rest of the cards are put face down on the table as the draw pile. If there are 4 cards of the same suit on the field, the deal is void and so the dealer must reshuffle and deal again. For demonstration purposes, I will be showing the cards in my hand. The gameplay during your turn is the same as in Backup Pana and Hana Awase. That's one ribbon. That's another ribbon. So I get two ribbons during this turn. Okay, it's my turn again. Oof. Bam! Look at that. That's a lot of cards. And look at that, I am at 5 ribbons already. You may notice that I put the swallow card among the ribbons. Remember, all willow cards are counted as ribbons in the 6 ribbon yaku. Oh, and I didn't even leave a card for the opponent to match. That's unfortunate.
I got 6 ribbons. Once a player collects 6 ribbons, the round ends. The player who collected 6 ribbons earns 30 points and deals the next round. Hooray me! Now what happens if both players run out of cards in their hands and neither player collected 6 ribbons? Then the round just ends. All leftover cards on the field and in the draw pile are considered dead cards and will not be taken by any players in the game. The card scores are then counted like you would in Bakapana. The points in each card are also the same as in Bakapana. Note that the card points of Willow cards are determined by their actual rank instead of being treated as ribbon cards. The player with a higher card score earns 20 points and deals the next round. So let's count the scores. 4 times 20 equals 80, 1 times 10 equals 10, 4 times 5 equals 20, 8 times 1 equals 8, 80 plus 10 plus 20 plus 8 equals 118. So my score is 118 points. 1 times 20 equals 20, 3 times 10 equals 30, 3 times 5 equals 15, 10 times 1 equals 10, 20 plus 30 plus 15 plus 10 equals 75. So the opponent's score is 75 points. So the winner of the round is me. Am I good or what? Just like in the Hanafuda games discussed in my previous videos, there are two ways to tally the scores. In the easy method, the points earned in each round are counted. The total score of a player is the sum of all the points they earned in the game, and the player with the higher total score wins the game. In the zero-sum method, each player starts with an initial score, let's say 200 points. Each time a player earns points during a round, the same points are deducted from the opponent. The player with the higher current score during the final round wins the game. And that was Rokutan. It is very simple. I'm surprised that not many people play it. It is very suitable for beginners who are tired of playing Bakapana. And it feels very exciting every time a player is close to obtaining 6 ribbons. Oh, and I also want to mention that there is a very similar variant to this game called Nanatan. Nanatan or Shichitan literally means 7 Tanzaku or 7 ribbons. Oh great, another Yaku from Hana Awase. And of course you know what that means. It's the same game except you collect 7 ribbons instead of 6. So rather than explaining the game, let's just talk about the variations we can apply to the game instead. Variations Just like any card game played around the world, Hanafuda games can be played using house rules, which vary depending on the player's liking. Of course, they are optional, so use them at your discretion. Finish the dead cards When both players run out of cards in hand, there will still be cards left on the draw pile. Each player continues taking turns by simply drawing a card from the pile and playing it. In this way, there is no possibility that the game will end without a player forming 6 or 7 ribbons. 10 cards in hand instead of 8. This rule also has the same purpose as the previous one. Eliminate the possibility that the game will end without a player forming 6 or 7 ribbons. Because in a 2-player game, if 10 cards are dealt to each hand and 8 cards are dealt to the table, then the cards in each player's hand will run out at the same time as the cards in the draw pile. And that's all there is to this game. Wasn't the mechanic of stopping the round after forming a Yaku interesting? How about we go a step further? How about the Yaku stops the round, but you have the option to keep playing if you want to? Tune in for part 5. I think you know what's next. Oh, I meant what game is on the next video. Not the next part of this video because it's time for a regional Hanafuda showcase. Awabana is a regional Hanafuda deck which originated from the old Awa province, which is now Tokushima Prefecture in the Shikoku Island in Japan. It consists of 48 cards just like a standard Hanafuda deck but with different illustrations. The month of each suit is clearly labeled on the cards in Japanese. Well, most of them. There are silver overprints on most of the high-ranking cards, some of which are elaborate, while others are just striped with silver paint. 
There are also poetry on some of the cards, but they have no gameplay purpose and are just there for aesthetics. Apart from the 48 cards, Awabana also has an extra card, which has an illustration of Kintaro as a child. He had extraordinary strength, capable of uprooting trees, wrestling bears, and fighting monsters. And when he grew up to become a samurai, he changed his name to Sakata no Kintoki. Because of this, the deck is also known as Kintoki Bana. Also, since the Junk of Willow depicts nothing but willows, it could mean that the card was not used as an Onifuda. Instead, the extra card depicting Kintaro was used as the Onifuda. There aren't any accounts of games played specifically using Awabana, so it's not exactly known how the Kintaro Onifuda was used. Anyway, if you can travel to Japan and you want to own this deck, you're in luck because Oishi Tengudo, one of the oldest Hanafuda manufacturers still existing today, still makes this deck. There is also printed evidence that Nintendo manufactured or at least sold Awabana. In one of its card catalogs from the 1930s, the deck was referred to as Kintoki Iri Hanafuda which literally means Hanafuda with Kintoki. It must have been discontinued by Nintendo during early to mid 20th century and unfortunately there are no surviving Nintendo branded Awabana decks so we can only imagine what the deck could have looked like. Anyway, that's all for now. See you in part 5.